The box office name in this reshuffle was clearly Jacob Rees-Mock. He's the one that everyone knows, mm. and he'll move from being leader of the House, which is a not very well-known position, pretty perfunctory about the order of debates, which debates get time in the Commons and mm. all that sort of thing. Um, and Jacob Rees-Mock is now moving to a Brexit-specific position, trying to push forward the opportunities that Brexit uh, enables us to have. Mm. Of course, Brexit wasn't a policy prescription. It wasn't no. saying that we must do this. It was giving us a wider array, array of options to choose. Mm. And, of course, he was a huge advocate for, for Brexit. He but his, he has a double-barrelled title, really, now, doesn't he? He's Bre Brexit Opportunities and Government Efficiency. What does that mean, exactly? Is that a new title? Well, it's, it's a slightly ironic title about government efficiency, given so many of the other jobs that were created during this reshuffle. Mm. We've got a bigger cabinet now, more cabinet ministers than we have had in quite some time, and many cabinet ministers having confusingly double-jobbed titles mm. as well. We saw some other moves in and around, many people getting new jobs in the Cabinet Office to support Steve Barclay, who's now also not only in the Cabinet Office, but the new Prime Minister's Indeed. Office, the Office of the yep. Prime Minister. And we saw Chris Heaton-Harris uh, move into the position of Chief Whip. Now, he's a Brexiteering backbench Tory MP who, who does some brilliant, and when I say brilliant, I mean terrible and cracker-level jokes really worthwhile. Yeah. Um, I think he actually tweets some of them out sometimes, some, some dad jokes. Yeah. Maybe you can find some of yeah, them we'll, in the Yeah, we'll try and get um, some for you. And Mark Spencer, who mm. was the previous chief whip, moves into Jacob rees Mogg's old role, uh, which is leader of the Commons. Now, mm. Mark Spencer was under a little bit of pressure because yeah. the discipline in the Tory party has not been strong recently. Many rebellions, uh, many problems with regard to getting Tory MPs on the side of the government's agenda. So this sort of sideways move is a bit of an acknowledgement that the whipping operation has not been up to scratch. Yeah, and what 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 do you think this reshuffle, this mini reshuffle, was intended to signal? Obviously, the prime minister has been under a lot of scrutiny because of well, Partygate, and of course his comments on Jimmy Savile. He mm. said he's going to make changes uh, in the way he's running his operation. Is this the change you think people wanted to see, or his, as particularly those backbenchers who have been critical of, of the Prime mm. Minister? Well, this is part of that change. Of course, the big change that we heard over the weekend was the new Prime Minister's office creation, mm. the, the starting of these new structures about how Downing Street in and of itself is run. Well, that's left some holes elsewhere in government, so there's been a, a number of new people appointed to the Cabinet Office. There's also uh, the number of... Uh, PPSs, the sort of bag-carrying assistants that the Prime mm. Minister has, who are MPs as well, has doubled from two to four. So two new 2019 intake MPs mm. are now joining the Prime Minister as his PPSs. Wow. And that's yep. going to really try and connect the Prime Minister more to those backbenchers as well. Mm. So this is some of the low-rung levels of government that have been yeah. moved around, but potentially growing the connection yeah. between the Prime Minister and his parliamentary party.